Welcome back to the Live with Aaron. That's right. We're here live again in San Bernardino. And for those of you that are listening to us, you can also watch us on Ustream. All you have to do is go to Ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash KCAA TV. And you can watch us live in the studio and talk with all of our friends. In fact, we've got two comments. Yeah, hello. Serpent Visionary said Avengers Rock saw it regular. I want to see it again in 3D for sure. That's awesome, Serpent Visionary. And Viviana said, where did the name The Avengers come from? Well, she said creator Sidney Newman conceived the title before anything else. So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in and chatting with us. And we are excited now because in our next segment right now we have... John Marshall Jones. That's right. Do we have him online right now? Are you now? there, John? I am. Woo! Awesome. Welcome to the show. <laughs> awesome. Now, John, uh, you, you know, thank you so very much for coming on. You, you're, you're, you've been very busy lately. What's going on there? Oh, man, uh, it's, it's been pretty crazy around here. Um, you know, I had a, uh, a really fun TV season this year. I was on uh, Glee. Yes. Uh, Pretty Little Liars, Heart of Dixie. Last Man Standing and uh, and Jane by Design. Are you tuckered um, out now? Uh, well, you know, listen, um, I'm never tired when I'm acting. That's a great that's a great point. Why would you say that? Well, because I don't think that any actor should ever complain about working. <laughs> this is so true. No, that's, you, know, that's <laughs> just, you spend most of your career not working, no matter how successful you are. This is true. So if you're working, you're in good shape. <laughs> now, John, again, you 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 know, I I applaud you because not only are you kind of in business, you know, acting, doing your own thing, but you're also inspiring other people to do the same because you've put together a a, a really good uh, DVD set and you've even put some classes together. Can you tell us about that? Yes, that's called Mastering the Auditions, and uh, as a matter of fact, um, I just came back from teaching it at Chicago State University. Hey, Chicago! Chicago in the house! You're always Chicago. in my city! We keep well, missing each other! Uh, I know, I know. We'll get it together, Kelly. Okay. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the great thing about it is that what people don't realize is that actors actually go out on job interviews more than any other profession. That's and, true, huh? Uh, yeah, learning, rejection is like a, 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 a fact of life in that. Well, rejection is a fact of life, but also developing uh, good job interview skills are a fact of life for everybody that's working. That's so true. And so, and those job interview skills translate to other professions. So the idea of being prepared, of uh, being able to present yourself in a certain way, um, understanding how to enter a room and how to exit a room so that it doesn't take away from the body of your interview, all of those things translate to other professions. Um, so it turned out that at Chicago State, the dean of the business school came down to watch the presentation and thought that this was exactly what her business school students needed to be learning. Um, so it wasn't just for actors, it was for everybody. And, uh, and that was uh, a real confirmation of what I've been working on for the last few years. That's awesome and so true. And, and John, how do you walk into a room? What are some tips? Because there's a lot of people listening. We've got some people online. I know some actors are tuning in. What can you tell them? Like, yeah, because some people really want to walk in and they want to make their presence yeah. known and I'm here. Is that, is, is that advised? I'm going to tell you the, the easiest way to do this. Whenever you um, meet somebody and they smile at you, you instinctively smile back. It's not something you think about. It's just that's how our, our bodies so react. So true. It's contagious. So if you walk in the room with a big smile on your face, it says to everybody in that room that you are absolutely confident about yourself and about what you're about to present to them. That's good. So my suggestion, just as a, um, a tip off the top of my head, is when you walk in the room, you walk in with a big smile on your face, you say hello to everybody, you treat them all like they're old friends right. and that you have that kind of interaction with them and assume that the only reason that they brought you in the room is because they want to hire you. So it's your job to lose, not their job for you to win. I think what you That's just great. said about, like, you know, that 
that with that confidence and knowing that they're there to hire you. So many times actors walk in the room before anyone before they go into a business meeting either or an interview. They say, oh, man, I don't know. There's like all these excuses that run through a person's head like, oh, man, I already know I'm to this, I'm to that. And it's like you're already counting it against you where they brought you in that room. They've seen your headshot. They've seen what you've done. You've gone through a lot of the process. Yeah, you've already – so they could have picked a million other people to do so. And so just really owning that opportunity, I think you really hit it on the nail with just what you said right there. Now, once somebody gets going as far as getting credits, how do you maintain? How do you maintain working? Because you've maintained it over the years. Well, I um, I learned from a, uh, a dear friend of mine, uh, Harry J. Lennox, who, um, who works every bit as much as I do, um, that it is the quality of the work and not what you're being paid that's going to determine what the body of your work is over the course of a career. So Harry will go from a $50 million movie to – doing a equity waiver play, mm-hmm. just like that, and never think about it. And what happens is you start to develop an expectation of yourself of being a working actor and that you're working all the time. Mm-hmm. And eventually, because you keep working, your level of expertise keeps rising. And the higher that your level of expertise is, the more that people are going to want to hire you. So I, I, the, I, I've heard it said, if I may, that that uh, you know, actors. There are some actors that get so large, then then all of a sudden they say that they have a hard time finding things. But I've heard that it was actually because they don't. They tend to not want to audition anymore. They feel that they've reached a point where they don't need to audition. But what, what would you say about that? Um, I say that some people have reached the point where they don't need to audition. Um, but that's very few people. Mm-hmm. And in this marketplace, that number gets smaller and smaller, uh, you know, every week with the advent of so many different uh, kinds of programming that are coming on that aren't scripted anymore. Oh, so true. And, By the way, I, I have a huge beef against that right now because I want scripted. You've done a lot of great scripted shows. Uh, uh, John Dofer, I have to go back to this. <laughs> yeah, I have to go back a to huge it. Huge fan. I, I'm sorry. It, I was I watched that religiously. They got me addicted, and then I never really got the full answer of why John Doe was so smart and why. Did you get the insider scoop on that? Well, um, it had to do with a connection to the Illuminati. Oh, oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that's that's what was coming in season two, and then just some so interesting. political things happened, and season two never got off the ground. But um, it didn't really have anything to do with the show at all. No, was it was fantastic. Firefly they canceled as well, and then Firefly ended up because of the fans. They ended up bringing it back into a movie. John Doe needs to come back with you in it. <laughs> it's a reboot. That's it. Yeah, well, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Now tell us, you know, you're busy right now. You, you. We spoke off, you know, uh, before, and we talked about how you've always written songs. Tell me about that. What, what, how have you written songs? Well, you know, I um, toured with uh, Second City Theater um, back in the late '80s, and um, you know, we created comedy material on a weekly basis. A lot of it was improvised, but some of it was also uh, written. And, um, you know, that's where John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and, uh, you know, a a whole host of (laughs) great television comedians came out of that as a hotbed there. Um, And so uh, at that time, you know, we began um, writing music and different songs that were set up for presentation in a comedy theater. So I started writing music. Uh, at that time, back in the late 80s, and have been writing music over time, but have never just uh, had the time to uh, focus in on moving it from a stage present, uh, stage uh, venue to a recording venue. Now, and, and you've done this in such a way that, I mean, you haven't gone like J-Lo. You didn't go all... Uh, what did she do? I mean, she kind of did a big transition there. With well, Mark. yours is more like coming from a satirical, like a funny background. Yeah. Like yours isn't like you're an artist now, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's more like the sketch kind of comedy. Although he could be an artist. Although I did hear it, and it, uh, I'll be honest, John, it what? sounds like a lot of, pretty close, or actually better than half the music that's out right there now. <laughs> Um, listen, that was the, what, what has happened over time is that you can now get in and produce really high quality content without having to have a big record company behind sure, you. Sure, sure. And so, um, so it's given me an opportunity to kind of start focusing more on the recording career and being able to do it from, uh, from a grassroots basis. Now, obviously, we know what we're talking about, but for our audience, what is the name of, of your album, and more importantly, the first or the the cover single. the cover single? Um, the cover single, the lead single, and the name of the album are the same. It's called Sweaty Booty Cheeks. <laughs> Did you get that? Sweaty Booty Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a uh, uh, a clap that goes along with it. That when I yell booty clap, you go. <laughs> I can slap some booty. I mean, I can slap some. There you go. I, I can already tell that Kelly with all the rhythm. <laughs> yeah. And you're gonna be doing the music video soon too, right? Yeah, we're doing the music video soon. Um, we also, it's a full comedy album so this is the lead single but there's about nine tracks on the album each one is funnier than the last one and um we wanted to come out with sweaty booty cheeks um to start <laughs> with hip-hop that's uh, fun. because uh i think that's a great way to come in but we're also doing uh uh several r&b singles we got another uh hip-hop single called shake your pussycat that's just out of this world <laughs> <laughs> well, for our cameraman, he does like, like cats. But <laughs> um, and, and, and we have that. <laughs> Going right into what we have exactly, we have that single. We're going to play it right here on our way out. But, John, I want to say thank yeah, real you. Real quick, John, yeah. before we let you go, is there a Facebook or a Twitter or anything that uh, people listening or watching can, and can find you? Um, they can find me at John Marshall one Okay. On Twitter or John Marshall Jones page on Facebook. All okay, right. Cool. Well, if you need a female Eminem or anything like that for an upcoming single, <laughs> you can do I'm that. Just to do a sketch, I, I, you know I got skills. You I know, know I got, you got skills. skills. You're from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, let's check this out. Let's check out the single. Yeah, let's check out the single. Here it is, John Marshall Jones, his new single. Sweaty, sweaty. booty cheeks. Oh my God. Y'all like it sweaty? What's your name, baby? Uh huh. Kelly. <laughs> Y'all saw you walking. That's your name, Kelly. Your booty clap got my attention. That's it, Kelly. I saw you walking. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did. Here you go. You ready? We got to do it. Uh-oh. You can create the, uh, Aaron, the dance right now. I, if, if those who cannot watch, <laughs> please choose. They're going to tune away right now. Tune like that. in as Aaron is... <laughs> oh my lord. Dude, I'm getting this. John Marshall Jones, thank you so very much for taking a moment with us. And we are going to have to have you back on, on your next single. Hey, looking forward to it, guys. And thanks for having me in. All right, thank take you. Care, John. Take care. Booty clap. Booty clap. Oh, booty clap. Stay right there. We're going to be right back with Jonathan via Escusa and some great tips for you businesses that needs the right app for your iPhone. Stay tuned for that. All right, coming back right now. Let's do a little booty clap. <laughs> Aaron, can you do the booty clap? With the booty. Oh. <laughs> I got sweaty booty cheeks all the time. I didn't need to know that. Too much information. Let's go now right to our spot. 